Welcome to the UNV Certification Program. The topic of this video is Introduction of Common Storage Media. This course can enable you to get to know the basics, parameters, and applications of TF Card. Understand the construction, classification, and common parameters of SSD. And have a good command of HDD working principle, application scenarios, and common indicators. This course covers three main parts, TF card introduction, SSD introduction, and HDD introduction. Let's start with TF card introduction. Before introducing TF card, we have several questions for you. What kind of storage cards do you know? How many of them have you used before? Here lists five commonly used card types for you in this slide. SD card is a new generation of memory device based on semiconductor flash memory, which has the advantages of small size, fast data transmission speed, hot plug, etc. It is widely used in portable devices such as digital cameras, tablet computers, and so on. TF card, also called micro SD card. With the SD card adapter, it can be used as an SD card but it has relatively low speed and poor stability. The advantage is that it is small, and the size is about one-fourth of that of the SD card. TF card is generally selected for small size devices, like drones and smartphones. The third one is CF card. It is originally a data storage device for portable electronic devices, revolutionized the use of flash memory. In appearance, it is divided into CF1 and CF2 card. And in speed, it is divided into CF card and high-speed CF card. CF3.0 standard has been implemented now. NM card is an ultra-micro memory card created by Huawei, which is 45% smaller than the micro SD card. It has almost the same specifications as the nano SIM card. The sequential read rate is up to 90 megabytes per second, and sequential write rate is up to 70 megabytes per second. The last one of them is XQD card, a flash memory card format that is newly developed by Sony. Its read and write speed can reach 125 megabytes per second. We can refer to this table to do a comparison among them. As we can see, CF card has the largest size while NM card is the smallest one. In speed, CF card and XQD card are much faster than the other three. As mentioned in the last slide, their features and application scenarios are listed in these two rows. Much has been talked about storage cards. So what exactly is a TF card? The original name of the micro SD card is Trans Flash Card, TF Card for short, a kind of micro flash memory card. It was adopted by SD Association before it was named micro SD card. The size is 15 mm long, 11 mm wide, and 1 mm high, only about a quarter of a standard SD card, equivalent to the size of an adult's thumbnail. Micro SD cards are commonly used to expand the storage system of security cameras, car recorders, drones, sports cameras, smartphones, and other devices. As you can see in this slide, here are some parameters of the TF card, and we will introduce them one by one. Brand and model. Like the card in the middle, UNV is the brand, often followed by the model. TF card first line brands include SanDisk, Kingston, Samsung, Kyoxia, Lexer, etc. Here are four types of TF card micro SD, micro SDHC, micro SDXC, and micro SDUC. The storage capacity of micro SD is less than or equal to 2 GB, and that of micro SDHC is 2 GB to 32 GB. Micro SDXC has a storage range from 32 GB to 2 TB. And Micro SDUC is the largest, between 2 TB and 128 TB. Among them, Micro SDHC and Micro SDXC are two popular types. If you shoot 4K video, you may need a Micro SDXC card, 
because it has a storage capacity range from 32 gigabytes up to 2 terabytes, which is suitable for video recording. TF card capacity indicates the nominal capacity of the TF card, which is generally expressed in a larger font. The nominal capacity is associated with the card type. Common capacities are 32 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes, and 256 gigabytes. 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes are more cost-effective than other capacities. UHS stands for Ultra High Speed, a new technology for SDHC and SDXC memory cards to increase the speed of the bus interface. The maximum transmission speed of UHS-1 is 104 megabytes per second, and that of UHS-2 is 312 megabytes per second. So UHS-2 is twice faster than UHS-1. We can notice that V30, U3, and A1 are also shown in the card. They are different speed classes. How many kinds of speed class do we have for TF cards? The answer is 4. Speed class, UHS speed class, video speed class, and application performance speed class. The first kind of speed class is represented by the symbol C, including four levels, C2, C4, C6, and C10. The minimum write speed of C2 is 2 megabytes per second. Similarly, that of C4 is 4 megabytes per second, C6 is 6 megabytes per second, and C10 is 10 megabytes per second. UHS speed class is a higher speed level, expressed in U, including these two levels, U1 and U3. The minimum write speed of U1 is one-third of that of U3. Video speed class, represented by the symbol V, is divided into five levels. And the minimum write speed is the same as the number after the capital letter V. Then application performance speed class. Their full names are App Performance A1 and App Performance A2, which are standards for mobile phone memory cards. Their minimum, continuous, write speed is 10 megabytes per second. But the random read and write performances of A1 standard are 1500 IOPS and 500 IOPS respectively. While those of A2 standard are greatly improved to 4000 IOPS and 2000 IOPS. Since we are much clearer about TF card now, let's see how it can be used in real life. For smartphones, TF card can be used as external storage, which is more affordable and more accessible than internal storage. It becomes a good choice of many users today. As a mainstream storage device, TF card has large capacity, stable read and write performance, making it suitable for car recorders. If you want to quickly capture or shoot dozens of photos at high speed, a professional TF card can definitely meet your requirements. Even if shooting 4K ultra-high definition images, you do not have to worry about frame loss caused by slow storage speed. In many industrial scenarios, such as the most typical video scenario, devices usually need to work continuously for 7 times 24 hours. In this case, we do not have strict requirements on memory card speed, but on the amount of data stored and the overwrite life of the TF card. Now we move on to SSD part. Solid-state drives, also known as fixed drives, are hard drives made with arrays of solid-state electronic memory chips, consisting of a control unit and a storage unit. The storage media of SSD are divided into flash memory and DROM. With no mechanical or moving parts within the drive, there's a much lower risk of accidentally damaging your disk drive through impact or exposure. SSD storage options are not prone to malfunction. They don't have mechanical components, and they have a fundamentally simplified construction. Besides, SSD flash memory incorporates a growing suite of error correcting code to protect your data during the read and write process. It is widely used in automotive, industrial control, video technology, network terminals, power, medical, aviation, navigation equipment, and other fields. Let's take SATA SSD as an example to show you the structure of SSD. 
and the structure of M.2 SSD is similar. For main parts are highlighted in the picture. Main control chip, cache chip, SATA interface, and NAND flash. We will introduce them in the following slides. Then we talk about some core parts of SSD. Main control chip is the core device in an SSD, like the CPU in a computer, it assumes the role of command, computing and collaboration. The quality of a main control chip directly determines the user experience and lifespan of an SSD. While the different architectures, the number of cores and transistors, and the frequency are related to the performance of the main control chip. There are four flash memory particle types. SLC, MLC, TLC, and QLC. The main differences are the number of bits stored in one storage unit and erasure times. We can see SLC can only store one bit in one unit and has the longest lifespan. And their unit prices decrease in turn. With the highest stability, SLC is mostly used for enterprise storage, and TLC is suitable for daily work. SSD Interfaces SATA SSD is about half the size of the palm and was generally used in previous years. It is recommended that older desktop computers be upgraded with a SATA SSD, as SATA SSD uses the same interface as HDD and is much better in terms of compatibility. M.2 SSD is about the size of two fingers, which is the most widely used now. Its sequential read and write speed and 4K IOPS performance are much better than those of SATA interface SSD. The common capacities for SSD are 256 GB, 512 GB, 1 TB, 2 TB, and 4 TB. Generally, for SSDs with the same brand and model, the larger the capacity, the higher the price. Now the most popular capacities in the market are 512 GB and 1 TB. The choice of capacity depends on the specific use and budget. Sequential read-write speed Generally, the read-write speed marked on the SSD is the sequential read-write speed, and it is the performance of SSD for large capacity file reading and writing. As the name suggests, the reading and writing process will follow a kind of order. The higher the value, the stronger the read-write performance, and the unit is megabyte per second. 4K random read-write speed refers to the number of I.O. operations per second. The unit is I.O.P.S. Also the higher the value, the stronger the read-write performance. Unlike sequential read-write, random read-write is mainly for small-sized files, such as virus scanning and system startup. SSD lifespan refers to the total lifetime of the SSD and the amount of bytes of data that can be written during its life cycle. The indicators to measure the life of SSD mainly include DWPD, drive writes per day. How many times a user can fill a SSD every day during its life cycle? TBW, terabytes written. The total number of bytes that can be written in the life cycle of the SSD. Four pictures of SSD interface are shown here. SATA 3.0 is the most common SSD interface, also the most cost-effective interface, which refers to SATA revision 3.0. It means the standard is SATA 3.0, which is faster than SATA 2.0, with the interface speed of 6 gigabits per second. It is important to note that when upgrading SATA 3.0 SSD, you should check whether the computer motherboard supports SATA 3.0. MSATA stands for Mini SATA, which could be used on smaller devices. It has the same speed and reliability as SATA interface. MSATA is currently at risk of being phased out and may be replaced by the more promising M.2. M.2, normally used as high speed data storage, is a new generation of interface standard tailored for Ultrabook, which is mainly used to replace the MSATA interface. Its specification and transmission performance are much better than the MSATA interface. It used PCIe 2.0 channel first with a theoretical bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second. 
And now it switches to PCIe 3.0 channel with a theoretical bandwidth of 30 gigabits per second. PCIe SSD can directly connect the data to the CPU through the bus, greatly improving the transmission rate and speed. It was initially used in the enterprise market, which has higher data transmission speed than M.2 but also higher cost. Only in the last two years have PCIe drives become popular in the high-end consumer market. The downside is that PCIe interface is only available for desktops, which affects its applicability and popularity. Among them, commonly used interfaces are SATA 3.0 and M.2. When we mention SSD, we will think of HDD naturally. Their differences and similarities are listed here, such as their size, price, lifespan, storage unit, and operating speed. But what is an HDD? Hard disk drive, HDD for short, generally refers to a Winchester hard disk. It is a non-volatile memory that stores information with magnetic signals. Consisting of a motor, a disk rotating at high speed, and a magnetic head suspending above the disk. It can be divided into 3.5 inch, 2.5 inch, 1.8 inch, etc. by size, and ATA, SATA, SCSI, and SAS by the connector. Among them, ATA is obsolete. SATA is more used in laptops and desktop computers. SCSI is more used in servers. And SAS is the latest interface type with a transmission rate of 3.0 gigabits per second. The hard drive has been the main storage device in computers for decades. Do you ever wonder what's on the inside? The platter is where the information is stored. Both the top and the bottom of each platter is used, so it can store as much data as possible. The actuator arm helps the disk read and write information. And the data on a hard drive platter is read by read-write heads of actuator arm. The arm never actually touches the platters, but it moves so fast that human eye will have trouble keeping up with it. The platters are split up into tracks and each track is split up into sectors. When you read or write to the hard drive, the actuator arm must find the right track and the platters must rotate so the right sector is underneath the arm. It only takes a few milliseconds for this to happen. A typical HDD design consists of a spindle motor that holds flat circular platters. A spindle motor must provide stable, reliable, and consistent turning power for many hours of continuous use. Many hard drive failures occur due to spindle motor not functioning properly. Here are some application scenarios of HDD. Household hard disk is an ordinary hard disk for home use with a SATA interface. Suitable for 8 times 5 working schedule and not for continuous work. The second kind of hard disk is used for general video device with a SATA interface, suitable for 7 times 24 working schedule. With poor random reading performance, it is better at continuous writing. The third one is Enterprise Hard Disk. Most servers use SAS interfaces or FC interfaces. Generally, Enterprise Disk is stable and durable with the highest reliability. It usually has a special shockproof chip, which has a stronger error correction rate, and the disk is suitable for 7x24 working schedule. NAS Hard Disk is used by general home or small business for network storage and the interface is also SATA. Finally, let us see common indicators of HDD. Capacity refers to the amount of data that can be stored in the hard disk in bytes. Storage per disk. A hard disk is composed of one or several disks, and storage per disk is the total capacity of a single disk, including the capacity in both the front and back sides. Rotation speed is the rotation speed of the spindle motor. The unit is RPM, round per minute, means the number of disk rotation per minute. Cache is a memory chip on the hard disk controller with extremely fast access speed. It is the buffer between the internal platter of the hard disk and the external interface. 
Below are common rotation speed and common cache. Average access time is the average time it takes for the hard disk head to find the target data. Average seek time is the average time required for the head to find the track where the target data is located. An average latency is the time to wait for the specified data sector to rotate below the head after the head has moved to the track where the data is located. Data transmission rate is divided into internal data transmission rate and external data transmission rate. Internal data transmission rate is the rate at which data is transferred from the surface of the platter to the cache. While external data transmission rate is the rate at which data is read from the cache to the external bus. MTBF, mean time between failure, refers to the average working time between two adjacent failures, which is an indicator to measure the reliability of electronic products. After this course, you must know the basics, parameters, and applications of TF card. Understand the construction, classification, and common parameters of SSD. And have a good command of HDD working principle, application scenarios, and common indicators. That's all for introduction of common storage media. Thanks for watching. See you next time.